Hey y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler and you've arrived at day 91 of the 100 Days of Zentangle Project 2020. Thank you so much for being with me today. Our tangle is going to be Betwined. It is by Peggy Shargle, CZT, and it is so cool. It's an old pattern, an older pattern, but it's very cool with its 3D effects and it's extremely easy to draw. So hopefully we will have some fun with this. Let's get started. This betwined uh, tangle is based on a square grid. right and it's very simple but I don't want you to get lost in the line work okay I want you to focus on each square don't pay attention to what's going on in the squares around you each square okay we're gonna start by dividing these squares each with a diagonal line it does not matter which direction you go so you left these should be good to go All right, and these diagonal lines are gonna go in the same direction. And even though mine aren't exactly um, drawn exactly uh, perfectly, they're still gonna work fine. Okay, now, once you have your squares divided with a diagonal line, okay, we're gonna go through and on each side of this diagonal line, we're going to draw a curved line, sort of like a parentheses. Not curved in, not curved very much, just sort of loosely. It's just gonna go out slightly at the tops and bottoms. And they don't have to be perfect. Just put a slight curve in there. You'll be amazed at how easy this pattern is and it's very, very cool. Very 3D cool looking. And we know that I like those types. This is one of my favorite patterns. I have done this off and on over the years and uh, I love patterns that are simple to draw and have a 3D effect. So. I'm a big fan. All right, so now we've uh, divided each square with a diagonal line, and then we put two curved lines on, or a curved line on either side of that straight line, right? All right, so now what I want you to do is draw a diagonal line going the opposite direction, okay? And we're gonna go beneath or behind these lines that we just drew in okay don't um, don't get don't get uh, overwhelmed this is easy okay so just start at one corner and aim at the other corner and draw behind okay let's do another one Okay, not so bad, right? Okay, so the next thing to do is we're gonna add these curved lines uh, on each side of this other diagonal line, okay? But this is gonna be really simple to do because we're gonna have a start point where this line left off here and an end point where this line left off here, okay? So let me demonstrate. And if you come at the middle from each side from where from where the line ended on the other square 
if you do it that way, then you're gonna have a seamless, cool pattern, okay? Let's put in this other line. That's not gonna matter. We don't have anything to match. Let's go over here. We have one to match here, so we're gonna start here. Curve out. Now here we have two, all right? So we're gonna come up from here, come down from here, and match them up, okay? Once again, just match up your lines with these squares around it, okay? When you get into each square, look around to the squares around it and see what you need to match up. And I suggest you come, come up from the bottom, down from the top, or down from the top, up from the bottom because it allows you to aim at the same spot in the center and you'll have a higher likelihood of things matching up. Just a thought. This looks and sounds more complicated than it truly is. We are just matching the steps that we did in the, on the, uh, in the beginning, but drawing behind and just being aware of these lines in the in the adjacent corners that we can match. Oops. There we go. This is definitely an oldie but a goodie. And you can see we're done and this is the pattern. This was very simple to draw, right? Okay. Now, uh, one of the most effective things that I have seen on this is to black the in or ink the interstices between uh, the, in the pattern, the interstices meaning the blank spots left by the pattern. And so uh, let's do a couple for you here. I'm going to make that curve a little bit better. And if you're going to black, that will work. You can you sort of mold those the way you want them to be. And I'm not going to take a lot of time on this example since we still have the pattern to, or the uh, tile to do. But I want to give you a good example of just how effective inking these interstices can be. Okay, let's do these. I'm gonna have to get a brush, a set of brush pens. Pens. So that I can do this stuff a lot quicker and more easily. All right. So let's do this right here. Now, I do not like to ink. Uh, probably some of you feel the same. Probably some of you don't. In the last year, I worked really hard on getting to the point where the inking is part of my Zen. But uh, part of the thing that I don't like about grid patterns is, is inking large spots. And I frequently tend to uh, pass on them if there's too much inking. So um, um, I just want to show this to you. I have another thing that I'm going to use on my tile, I think. It'll be a lot less stressful for me as far as my patience goes. But if you're going to, to uh, ink the background on yours, I suggest take your time, do a good job, and make that part of your Zen flow. Okay, so this is uh, what it looks like, just roughly. And once you add your shading to each side of this, this is gonna make a huge, huge difference in the 3D quality of this. Okay, so check that out. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so um, my idea for me was to put um, 
hatch lines, which is my other go-to for filling uh, interstices or uh, making textural differences on a tile to differentiate between backgrounds and foregrounds. Uh, I love this technique because it's less stressful for me. Slow down than inking is, and that's just a personal thing. It has nothing to do with one being better than the other or one looking different than the other. They definitely have different looks. Uh, this one is very um, dramatic, and uh, mine is less, much less so. It's much more, I don't know what word I want to look, use for that, but it, but it's still dynamic and it still works, okay? So um, this is our pattern betwined today, and uh, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with in uh, changing this up. So let's get to the tile today. All right, so for today, I'm going to put in a squared border. Oops. Well, it's not gonna be square if I draw it like that, is it? Luckily, I'm planning on doing a wonky grid here. So you guys have seen me draw betwined. And so I was very curious to find out whether or not this uh, pattern would work in a wonky grid. Sorry, let's go out a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, let's see, what do I wanna do? I'm not gonna go too crazy with this, but I do wanna do something a little bit off. <laughs> it's me after all. So I'm going to do something sort of like I did on the uh, pattern, wait, uh, Rain King. Okay, then I'm gonna turn this and from that, from that experience, I am going to curve this. Let's see. Like this. Okay, so now I'm gonna square these off a little bit or rectangle them depending. That's definitely a rectangle, isn't it? It's all right, it's still gonna work. Now again, I like to draw these in pencil because uh, I'm not always sure when I get in there with a pen if I'm, if I'm doing things correctly. Now I'm gonna just go through and redraw this with my pen and then we'll get started on the drawing. All right, so. All right. I'm really having trouble with this. Probably should have left that one off, but that's okay. It's gonna be fine. Okay, so I am going to start uh, at the uh, end point here and start with my diagonal lines. I think I'm gonna start going uh, to the right to begin with. Now, as I draw my diagonal lines here, I'm going to want to work with the curve. And if this makes you uncomfortable, Please do your grid straight. This is a more advanced 
uh, technique. And so if this makes you uncomfortable or if you get um, really confused by this, I want you to go ahead and you just use a straight grid. As you can see though, my, cur my uh, diagonal lines are curving with the grid. Let's see. All right. And they flow naturally from one section to the next. It's kind of cool. Okay. All right. So this is what I've got to begin with. Okay. Not bad. Now you can see why I say if you're not comfortable with this, don't do it this way. This is going to be a lot uh, or feel a lot more complicated than the last um, squared version. All right, so now on each one of these diagonal lines, I'm gonna make my two dividing lines or my two curved lines. And some of these are gonna curve with the line and some of them will not, and that's okay either way. This is about to look really complex. I don't want you to get confused. Focus on each square, or in my case, um, whatever it ends up being. Okay, keep working. You can see that I'm using the exact same strokes that I used in the squared off version. And I promise you, just follow the steps and it will work. Trust the pattern to work. It will work. I'm not saying that unintended lines don't happen or you get things turned the wrong way, but Focus on each square or square-like thing <laughs> and just do your steps. Diagonal line, curved lines to each side, and you will have it. And while when we add this next step, it's going to look really complicated and scary, Trust me when I tell you it's going to work, okay? So now we need our diagonal lines going the other direction, right? And expect them to curve like these did, all right? So we're going to go... like this. Trust your pattern. Okay, so right now this looks really confusing and scary, but it's going to be fine. Trust me.
Some of these are a little bit harder to get the right angle on. Just curve with your lines. Okay. Okay. All right, I think I got it now. We're gonna put in the curved lines and join everything up and that should go really quickly. So let's roll. Remember to use the lines from the, from the adjacent squares or adjacent shapes to help you with your start and stop points on these. Okay. And it comes together. Okay. Okay. All right, that's uh, not going to be in there. Sorry, I am not going in order here. It, again, it's easier for me when I work in grid patterns to work from where I'm at. So I tend to get my basic uh, shapes in and then uh, as I put in the remainder part of the pattern, remaining part of the pattern, then I just tend to work my way out from there. It's not always a very good plan because uh, when I do that, then it's easy to forget places. I need to slow down with my lines. I'm being sloppy. As I go, I am shifting uh, the direction or the curve of these lines, depending on the square that I'm in, or the area I'm in. Just stop saying square because clearly these are not squares. They might be wannabe squares. Okay. Okay, just a couple more. Let's see if I've missed any spots. I'm sure as, as I, oops, there's one. I'm sure as I put in my fill pattern, I will 
find any that, that I might have not done right. There we go. Okay, I think that's it. I think so. I don't think I've missed any spots. So this is uh, betwined in the wonky grid. So now I'm going to put my um, marks in on the interstices and uh, see where that gets me. I'm going to do them straight up and down in one direction or another um, so that I can uh, keep my head straight on these. But um, uh, then we will see where we're at. I'll be right back. Let's see. Okay, let's follow the line. Oops, see? I got one and I found it. Alright.
Oops. Okay, so I probably, I started it, uh, but I probably will at the end, I decided to wait until after I shaded to finish that. But what I've just been doing is redrawing some of my lines, re-emphasizing uh, them uh, any place where my joins are awkward. I've sort of uh, inked a little bit around that, but I think what I'm gonna do instead of finishing that now is I'm going to go ahead and shade um, all of these spaces where um, it looks like the lines are going behind. So in each square, you're gonna have a couple of spots. You'll have this spot and this spot in each square, okay? And again, this is just the first round of shading. So I'm a little bit sloppy. I'm just trying to get the initial color down right there along the line where it goes under, underneath or behind. I want a lot of color right there at the overlap. Now I am getting off into the background a bit. Uh, I'm not too worried about that right now. I haven't decided whether I'm going to darken the background or not as far as uh, with graphite or I could use my uh, Tombow marker blender to sort of pick up some of that pigment and darken it. I haven't quite decided. All right, that's a little half one, but that's okay. That's kind of cool though when I did that because I split the two sides and that looks cool. Might have to play with that some more. Mm. Hmm, that's actually not a bad plan. Because I wonder, hmm, I don't know how, how restful that would be, but it would be a cool effect. If in the center where these, where these, um, elements crossed we did them like this sort of like i don't know i'll have to play with it <laughs> something to think about all right Let's see where i missed Okay, I think I got most of the spots. Let's blend. 
we can sort of decide what's next. And if I get too much graphite in these spots, of course, I have my uh, little eraser that can lift that up. But for now, I, I just want to focus on emphasizing the overlap. So, all right, this is where I'm going to leave you today, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I will be doing cleanup and prettying up and all kinds of things on this uh, tile uh, to see how I can finish it. But that's where I'm gonna leave you today. My kiddo is, is sneaking back in this evening and I wanna get finished in time to spend some time with him. So, if he's talking to me. <laughs> so, I'm going to leave this here with you today. Thank you so much for being with me on day 91 of the 100 Days of Zentangle Project. I hope that I will see you guys tomorrow.